Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now today what I'm going to show you is Jilly Todd showed me a beautiful blanket. She's came up with a different effect on the basic diagonal blanket. Now the diagonal blanket's been around for a long long time and this little twist and this 3D effect on it is absolutely beautiful. And we wanted to share it with everyone so you can give it a try too. Now the way a lot of people come up with the designs is they just sit and they work around on the on the room, winding wool on, winding it off, changing a design that's already there, moving it around a little bit. And this is how people come up with different designs and different effects on a design that may be already out there. Now as far as I'm aware, yes, the diagonal blanket has been out there for a long, long time, but this little twist on it hasn't. I have looked all over Facebook, YouTube and eBay where people sell blankets, and I haven't seen it quite done in this manner. These type of blankets are starting to become very, very popular because they're so quick to make. They use, you can use less wool with them as well. And this is why they're becoming so, so popular. So the pom pom blanket itself seems to be actually going down the scale a little bit. And these non pom pom blankets are coming up the way. And a lot more people are making these non pom pom blankets. It's just, the word non pom pom is exactly that. It just, it's the same style as a pom pom blanket, but you just don't cut the pom poms on it. Whatever you decide to call them, they're still beautiful little blankets. So I'm going to show you how to make that beautiful blanket that you've seen just there at the beginning. I'm using this beautiful pink. It's from John O'Hagan again and it's just a double knitting baby pink and it's absolutely fantastic. Now I've got four balls all rolled into this big one because this is easier for me to work with. So this is just your basic white double knitting. Again it's from John and this one was only 80 pence a ball and again I've got it wrapped up into this great big giant ball. Now this blanket is super fast, super easy. If you've done diagonals before you're going to sail through this. Now I will still go a little bit slower for anybody who's a beginner, but once you've done one of these blankets, you're going to sail through it. They're brilliant to make the car seat cover type ones or small comforters. If you make small comforters, they'll be doll prams, your baby, the top cover of your baby pram, and you can make these ones a little bit bigger. It's up to you what size. It doesn't use a lot of wool and it's really quick to tie as well. So you get your four strands. We're going to work with our four strands again as usual. Four strands of wool at the same time. Now if you're in America, basic yarn will work with this. You need a medium washer weight. I think I've said that correctly. You need a medium weight wool, and that is the equivalent of our double knitting or almost. Now tie it down in this corner. You can tie it here if you want, it's up to you. I always just tie in this bottom left hand corner. So we're going to do a three rounds in each diagonal. We're going to go up and down that way for three rounds, and then we'll go that way for three rounds. So you miss your first nails because there's nothing to tie on down here. So what we're going to do is every nail, just wind your wool just the way you normally do diagonal. Now this is super simple. If you've done diagonal before, you will sail through this. And it really turns out to be a beautiful top of the blanket. We're really going to make these flowers stand right out. So it's just a little twist on a normal 
diagonal blank here. So you do your base and your single colour. Whatever colour you want. And you can make this whatever size you want. Now that's my first round done. I'm going to go right back around here. Now I'm going to do another two rounds and I'll be back when I've got my other two rounds on. So just push all your wool down. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to run my wool along to this corner and I'm going to do three rounds diagonals going up and down this way. Miss your first nail and miss the nail here and we're going to wind our way around all the nails like this. Now if you're if this is the first time that you've done a diagonal, then just slow the tutorial down if you get a little bit lost. It does look a little bit strange when you first do these, but you'll get used to it and then you'll start coming up with absolutely fantastic ideas. Or different combinations of blankets. Don't wind too tight, you don't want to buckle the frame. Now a lot of people when they make the frame, if you put your nails on and if your nails show through the bottom, if your nails start to poke through the bottom, then just nail on another piece of wood over the top of it and then put your metal corners on. I have one or two people said to me, the wet and used wood, it was too thin. Now, you can use whatever wood you want. Some people do use two by two. That makes a huge sturdy frame. If you're wanting something a little bit lighter, then... If your nails come through the bottom, just hammer on another piece of wood. Just be careful you don't split your wood. I'll turn that back. And we'll go on with this. So I'm filling in the gaps and working my way back to the nail that I started on doing this side of the diagonal. So that's me back to the start down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another two rounds. So it's three rounds on here. And we're going to put three rounds here. So once you've done your three rounds, just tie off your wool down here in this corner. Now that's you got my three rounds on the base diagonal and I've got three rounds on this top diagonal. And between the nails you should have six little ladders. This is where you count how many rounds you've done. You should have six in between each of your nails for this little blanket. Now the next part is even easier. Even easier. Now, get your pink wool or whatever colour that you're doing. Again, I've got four 100 gram balls of wool. And I'm going to go around, so I'm going to go around four times, but every other nail. So we're not going to do these two nails. I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to miss a nail and come down the next one. I'm going to miss that nail 
and I'm going to come down this one. So each time just miss a nail, just like this, and this is all we're going to do. We are not going to put any white on with this. So I'm going to go right around that corner and follow my pink rule back. Once you've got one layer on, it's easy to see it. So we're going to do both diagonals. So I'm going to put four rounds on this way, then I'll put four rounds on that way, but only on the pink and missing every other nail. One, you're going to save on wool, and two, it makes that top flower stand right out and it looks so, so pretty. And I think Jilly's came up with a great idea. And as far as we know, this blanket has not been done before in this manner. So I'll get my four rounds done and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Now I'm going to tip it to the side and you can see how deep it's becoming. So we want that pink to stand up away from that white base and it will and it's going to look amazing. So now we've got our pink on. Now I've done four rounds of the pink because I want these flowers to stand up really tall against this white base that's going to be on the bottom and it's going to look absolutely stunning. Now just take your wool along to this corner here on this side and what we're going to do is we're going to miss a nail and come down, miss a nail and go up, miss one and go up and come down and miss one. And you'll find what you're doing is you're wrapping your wool around the nails that already have pink on them. And miss that one and come down. Miss that one, go around that one, miss a nail, and we're going to go up, miss that nail, and come down, miss a nail. And go up, miss one, and come down, miss one. Now when you get up to the corner, don't bother with these nails. Just go right around the corner like that. Because if you do those nails, there's nothing to tie. You'll only have one little pink line. So just follow your wool back. And we're going to do four rounds. And that's going to make this little pink flower stand up. Now I'm going to do, that's me done one round, I'm going to do another three and I'll come back and show you what it's like. Now I did tell you this is really, really quick. Now once you get to the bottom, just tie your wool on. Tie it securely. Push your wool down onto your nails, and that's it. Now we're going to tie it. Now <laughs> I can hear you all screaming. What about the other diagonal? We're not going to do this diagonal. When we tie this in, you're going to have your little pink flowers here. And you're just going to have your white base in there. So what this is going to do is it's going to make your top flower pattern that I love so much. So don't do any more to it. Now we're going to tie it. So just tie it the way you normally tie 
a diagonal blanket. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to tie it in the white. I'm going to tie it very quickly, very easily, diagonal to diagonal in the white. I'm going to tie it along here in the white along all these diagonals and please tie your ends twice. You don't want those strands to pull out, especially if you're going to make small comforter blankets. You can see from the picture the small ones that Jilly has made. Now if you're going to make small blankets, you make sure that you get your ends tied in twice all along the edges so they don't come out. So what you do to tie a diagonal is you'll start in the corner and you'll tie each one individually. So tie it securely here. Tie your cross sections, all your cross sections, where they're white and pink. And remember and tie these ones where you've only got your white. Tie those as well. So tie every cross section. Securely tie it at the end. Cut your wool and start again on your next one. Securely tie it, cut it off and do your next one. Now I'm going to tie this up and I'll come back and I'll show you what it's like. So all you do is just cut between the nails the way we always do on these blankets. Just cut down the middle. Now your pink will be a little longer, the fringe will be longer on the pink, but you just tidy that up to all to the same length. That will just all come loose, just the way it always does. And then your little flowers will all relax and they'll pop up. And you'll see them perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way around this frame and I'm going to cut all the blanket free and then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Here is our beautiful little blanket. Now you can make this in a bigger size. Now one thing I'm going to point out to you is this blanket will stretch a little bit. Because of its design, I'm going to show you this, I'm going to zoom in. Because of the design of it, it's just diagonal, there's no square base. You've got open parts here. Now that's why it'll move around like that. It will stay in its blanket shape like that, as you can see. Now it, just, it does just move around, but don't worry about it. It's perfectly all right, and it does, as you can see, it does keep its nice shape. Now, I've done my fringing with the round corner because this corner is the only part with a, a, a bit that's here, as you can see. The rest of it is it's quite opened on the edges, but don't worry about that. When you pull it, as you can see, because I've double tied the edges. Now, I'm nowhere near that. Somebody said to me, you're holding it. I'm not holding it. Look at these small edges here. Now, if you pull them, my hand's nowhere near it. And if you pull that really hard, and you can see I'm pulling it hard, it's not coming out. So please, tie your edges twice. So that's that little part sorted out anyway. Now, when you take this, off the loom, it will be quite flat. To get these, I'm going to zoom in. To get these little flowers so puffy like that, you're going to have to manipulate it just a little bit. Just let it 
give it a chance to come out of that stretch state from when it was on your loom. Now when it's on your loom, it's all stretched out like this. Now you need to give your wool a chance to relax. So play around with it. Get it to loosen itself up a little bit so that those little pink florets here in the middle come nice and puffy up like that. So I'd like to thank Julie Todd for sharing this effect of this blanket because I, th I think it's beautiful, it's really beautiful and I love this other side and it is nice and light and airy and you can make these bigger like I've said already. Now Julie does sell her blankets as do a few of the other ladies in my Crafty Twins craft group but I'm going to put a link in the bottom here to Julie's Facebook selling page. I'll also put a link in to Joan O'Hagan where I buy my wool. This is just the baby double knitting and the same for the white. It's just the same wool but it's just a different colour. John is opening a website and I'll put a link in the bottom down in the description to John's website and I'm sure I'll get it checked but I will put the link in for his Facebook selling group. They both got the same name. They're going to be called. They're still called uh, knitting wool sales, and I'll put a link to both in the bottom there. So go and have a look at his brand new website where all his wool's going to be. He's still going to have the same super deals. He's still got the same postage, the amount for postage, and for me, especially for me, it's so much cheaper buying my wool from John where I'm paying less for a ball of wool than I do in the shops and his delivery is less than what my bus fare is down into town and back again because I don't drive a car so it's and I'm not lugging around big bags of wool either it just gets delivered straight to the door and it's only £2.85 to get it delivered to the door. Now he will deliver to other countries as well as long as you're willing to pay the extra postage on it. Please also subscribe to my channel give it the thumbs up, leave a comment, I love reading all your comments and again it does not cost you any money to subscribe to my channel, it's totally free even though you can see the word subscribe it's not a monthly subscription or anything that you do not pay any money to subscribe to my channel, it gives my channel moral support and that is all I ask of everybody that watches or subscribes it, it gives me moral support there is no monetary gain from having a lot of subscribers <laughs> what it's going to do is it's going to help to get that that youtube play button from youtube for having a hundred thousand subscribers so finally thank you all for watching please come back for the next tutorial so until then take care happy crafting and I'll see you all again soon. Now, goodbye.